Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. The single best idea out on Apple Podcasts. Thank you so much. The plan here is a six minute, five minute, seven minute quick view of two smart voices, sometimes three, today two. Two smart voices of what we do on Bloomberg uh, Surveillance. Again, it's three hours. Look for it on YouTube. Subscribe to Bloomberg Podcasts. Search for Bloomberg Podcasts. And then we try to pick out here two uh, uh, pieces of the show that we think have some real uh, insight. I'll emphasize it's, it's not like a committee. We don't have a three-hour meeting. We're not sitting around a desk going, oh, you know, I don't, Anastasia, I really don't like what she said or that. We just picked two of the wonderful voices we had today. I really want to emphasize some of the skill and talent of Bloomberg Opinion. We had today Lionel Laurent from Paris on the French elections, and he was absolutely riveting in his, not certitude, but his belief that Mr. Macron has lost. It's really the first time I've heard that. <clears throat> but he meant no words about it, that this is a debacle. A debacle, that's what they say. Debacle for uh, Mr. Macron. And then we got bonus round. Adrian Wooldridge showed up with Bloomberg Opinion from London. And he was mesmerizing on the scale and scope of the Tory defeat, the conservative defeat in the United Kingdom. I think one of the great messages here from Adrian Wooldridge and Leonel Laurent is it does have ramifications for the United States, and that will play out here as we go to our election. Again, in a week's time, our David Gura leading our coverage with Joe Matthew and Kaylee Lines on the debate, which looms and suddenly seems to be more uh, important. Suddenly, inflation may be disinflating, but so much of it is a view short-term of your belief in inflation, or is captured by the University of Michigan the five and 10 year view here, Torsten Slack of Apollo Global Management. If you look at Michigan, five to 10 year inflation, long term expectations, the median is still very well behaved. So the median household still thinks inflation will be 3.1, which is where it's been for the last several years. But if you look at the mean, you will see a significant increase in one half of the population expecting that inflation is going to be dramatically higher than the other half. And if you look at the sub questions in the University of Michigan, who is it that's expecting inflation to be higher? It is generally speaking, the bottom 33% of household incomes, meaning lower income households expect much higher inflation than high income households. And it's generally also people with high school or less education that expect inflation to be a lot higher. So you're beginning to see some divergence in inflation expectations, and this is opening up a very important debate in the Phillips curve that you and I, Tom, had talked about for years, where if inflation expectations for half of the population are very, very high, okay. what does that mean for when the Fed says that inflation <clears throat> expectations are under control? Yes, the median may be under control, but there's a significant part of the population right. that still worry about inflation. Can't say enough about Torsten Slack's day-to-day work, of course, uh, with Deutsche Bank and now at Apollo Global uh, Management. His work on American housing dynamics is just world uh, class. Torsten Slack. Of Apollo. Uh, wonderful to talk to Anastasia Amoroso uh, again. I think it's so important in the Wall Street and the financial media grind where people become talking heads. And what we try to do at Surveillance Every Day is really sort out the talking heads and look for substance. One of the ways we do that is we look back, and I want to make clear here that when we look back, we're not just looking for people that got it right. We're just as interested in people that got it wrong and why they did. You see a number of people that were bears on Wall Street lifting up now. Not only are they lifting up and we want to know why they're lifting up to a bull market, but we also want to know how they got it wrong as a bear market. That's really one of the fabrics of of what we've done for 20 uh, years. Anastasia Amoroso is one of those people. There's massive substance uh, here. She is absolutely nailed to be in the market, be U.S. domestic, and don't be afraid of the big uh, tech. Can't say enough about it. We digressed with her as she came in. You know, usually we're talking this, that, this gossip. Forget about it. She's all fired up about AI. Here's Anastasia Amoroso of iCapital on chat 
GPT. Maybe not a lot of people are actually using this across their, their functions right now, but I think a lot of people will in the future. I think what's happening right now is the race to invest in artificial intelligence by hyperscalers, but also by other companies, you know, across different industry verticals. I think there's a great realization by companies. If you're not going to focus on investing in AI now, you are going to mm. be left behind. So why would you continue to hire the same amount of, you know, workforce when you can automate certain tasks and boost your margins. So I think that's a uh, universal sort of understanding right now from, uh, you know, from corporate development departments, and that's what's driving the investment cycle in artificial intelligence. That's why I don't think it's a coincidence that the likes of NVIDIA and Broadcom and you know, actually a whole suite of semiconductors are benefiting from the build out of the backbone of artificial intelligence. You know, do I think the momentum is a little bit stretched at this very point? You know, do I think some exuberance crept into a stock like NVIDIA, yes, mm -hmm. but at the same time, if the data center sales are growing 400% plus yep. year yep. over year, that's fundamentals. Anastasia Amoroso of iCapital. It's a Thursday. We'll be here Friday in an odd and strange week. Felt like a Monday today, but it is Thursday, and we'll get you to Friday as well. Don't forget, on YouTube, search and subscribe to Bloomberg Podcasts. Apple CarPlay on Android Play as well, and on Apple Podcast, single best idea. <laughs>